guys, welcome back to another one. If you are new to the channel, I am Gold Pony. I do new car, truck, SUV reviews on YouTube. And today we are in the new 2021 Nissan Rogue, courtesy of Apple Nissan in York, PA. For more information on their inventory, please feel free to check out the link in the description box below. And so wanted to hop in this one today for pretty obvious reasons. This has been completely redesigned inside and out for the 2021 model year. This is the next generation of Nissan Rogue. So having said all of that, what do you guys say? Let's just go ahead and jump right into it. And as always, let's start with pricing. And so as you can imagine, there are a few different trim levels for the 2021 Nissan Rogue. First one being the S starting at $25,650. Next being the SV, which is what we have today for $27,340. SL for $32,000. And lastly, the Platinum starting at $35,430. And now we'll say that was all pricing for the front wheel drive configuration. If you wanted to add all wheel drive to any of those trim levels, simply add $1,400 to any of those prices. And so regardless of trim level that you go with though, the power plant on the Rogue is going to be the same. Powering this beast is going to be a 2.5 liter direct injected inline four cylinder, putting out 181 horsepower at 6,000 RPM, 181 pound feet of torque available at 3,600 RPM, sent to front wheels or all wheels through a CVT with paddle shifters, which you guys know we will of course be testing out in a little bit here zero to 60 time comes in in approximately 8.2 seconds with mpg numbers coming in at 27 in the city 35 highway for the front wheel drive 25 in the city 32 on the highway for the all-wheel drive configuration but either way taking regular unleaded fuel so that's going to save you a little bit of money at the pump there but so now before we test out the paddle shifters or the acceleration or anything like that i did want to mention there are some drive modes for the road and that drive mode dial by the way is located directly behind the cup holders you simply turn that to the left or to the right to adjust between different driving modes including drive modes like eco sport snow and off-road and that off-road driving mode and the snow driving mode for that matter as well is only for the all-wheel drive configuration so i did want to emphasize that but essentially they will adjust things like the shift points and the throttle response so having said all that what do you guys say let's go ahead and put it in sport driving mode it did immediately just downshift for me so it is going to hold the RPMs at a much higher level, giving you a bit more power on demand for things like merging onto the highway, things like that. So now that we are in that sport mode, what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and find a straightaway and let's see how quickly these paddle shifters are going to react for us. Keep in mind, this is a CVT transmission, so they are essentially simulated gears, but we still like to test them out, of course. Not that bad, actually. The CVT, the paddle shifters with the CVT, actually imitate gear changes quite well. And I will also say, before I did that acceleration, I actually pushed the shifter all the way to the back one more time. That actually does give you a full simulated manual shift mode, which is kind of nice. So it is telling me what gear I'm in on the gauges up here as well. So it kind of lets the driver have full control over the shifting. And even if you're not using the paddle shifters for your own enjoyment shifting through the gears, you can always use them for engine braking when it's snowing out as well. So they're gonna be there for you for that reason. So you're less likely to slide off the road from hitting the brake just downshift using the paddle shifters and they're going to be there for you for that reason but now having done that let's go ahead and find yet another straightaway and let's do a quick little acceleration test giving back full control to the rogue and let's see how quickly we can get this one here up to speed all right in three two one off we go get it <laughs> it's a little bit loud but eh. Not the quickest acceleration in the world. I was going downhill a little bit there, so that helped, I guess, a little bit, but still not the quickest thing in the world. But really, that's not what the Rogue is here for. It's not there to be a race car. It's there to give you reliable transportation that's going to haul your family from point A to point B. And that did kind of feel like 0 to 60 in 8.2 seconds. So it is what it is. It's pretty much as expected as far as the acceleration goes, at least. But to go along with that acceleration as always braking is equally important and so up front you will find 11.7 inch ventilated front discs in the back 11.5 inch ventilated rear discs and as far as that 60 to 0 stopping distance goes this is where the road gets it 100 right you guys 
because that actually comes in at 114 feet and that braking feel is great. Definitely no issues with any brake pedal delay and it brings you to a very quick stop. And that 114 feet number, I wanna emphasize that because a lot of times other SUVs will put you in the 120s, some of them even in the 130s and as high as 139 feet if we're talking about the Volkswagen Atlas. So 114 feet is plenty good and will keep you from getting into accidents, I'm sure, because that is quite a bit of braking power. So I do wanna mention that to you guys. But then touching on suspension and handling, up front, you're gonna get an independent strut type front suspension, in the back, independent multi-link rear suspension, front and rear stabilizer bars. And as far as the ride quality goes, it's pretty much as expected. Not the very best, but not the very worst. It's pretty much as I expected the Rogue to be. So no issues there for me. Steering feel, this is perhaps the first thing I wanted to really notice when I started driving the Rogue this year because I remember in past reviews of the Rogue, it had the most numbest, loosest steering feel you could possibly imagine in a vehicle. But now it is a completely different Rogue, definitely a very nice weight to the steering feel. Dare I say, even on the heavier side of things, which is a good thing because it better helps point you in the direction that you want to go. So I love the new and improved steering feel of the Rogue, comparatively speaking, at least to the older generation that was completely loosey goosey. So I do like that. As far as cabin noise goes, no issues for me there either. Not a whole lot of wind noise coming into the cabin. Touching on visibility, I can see perfectly fine. You're not going to have any issues there either. It is a smaller SUV, so you really shouldn't have any issues there. And if you were to go with the platinum trim level, you will also get a head up display projecting your speed, speed limit, and safety information onto the windshield, which is also going to assist with visibility. But that about rounds out the performance segment of this review, guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of this brand new 2021 Nissan Rogue. All right, so here she is, you guys, the new 2021 Nissan Rogue finished in super black. Looks dang good in black, if you ask me, but let's go ahead and start up front. And again, this one has been completely redesigned, brand new generation for the 2021 model year. Up front, you will find LED headlights coming standard across the board. Every single trim level is going to get them for extra illumination at night. Gotta love that. LED daytime running lights also coming with that as well. Automatic feature coming with the headlights too, meaning when it starts to get dark out at night, those headlights will turn on automatically for you there. So just one less thing you gotta worry about. Just just below all of it, LED fog lights coming with the SL and platinum trim levels, so therefore we do not have those today. You can also see those front air curtains located just below the headlights, directing air around the wheel and tire combination, giving you a little better aerodynamics when it comes to that. Also, that V-Motion front grille definitely looks good up front with the gloss black finish, of course, to the front grille. Definitely goes very well with this super black exterior. And in case anybody was curious as far as the headlights go, the headlights are actually below that other set of lighting that you guys can see up top there. That's going to be where you find your turn signals and your LED daytime running lights, but just below are actually where the headlights are going to be. But I think that pretty much rounds out the front. Let's go ahead now and make our way to the side of the Nissan Rogue here. So now we get our way to the side roof rails do come standard on the SL Platinum and optional on the SV and we do have that option you can see those silver roof rails up top there also rear privacy glass coming standard across the board you can see that chrome surrounds on the top portion of the windows there as well kind of ties together good with those silver roof rails actually when it comes to the side mirrors they are body colored power adjustable side mirrors for all trims and they will be heated with LED integrated turn signals if you were to go with the SV V trim level and up. So that's how you're going to go ahead and get that. Looking down then when it comes to the wheel setup of this one, 17 inch aluminum alloys coming with the S, 18 inch aluminum alloys coming with the SV. Therefore, that is what you guys are looking at right now. And 19 inch aluminum alloys coming with the SL and platinum trim levels. Do want to also mention, you guys can see the side skirts on this one and surrounding the fender wells there. That is going to be matte black unless you go with the SL or platinum trims. And then you're going to get some chrome trim on those side skirts. So I did want to mention that as well. But now let's go ahead and make our way to the back of this one. And so but now since we are around back, of course you will find a body colored shark fin antenna all the way up top there. Just below that rear spoiler with an integrated brake light. Just below that rear window wiper. Love how Rogue is spelled out horizontally. I always like that. I always say that in my reviews. It gives it a much more upscale appearance in my personal opinion at least. 
LED taillights actually come standard for all trim levels. And I love the shadow look to the taillights as well. Definitely a nice, more aggressive look, I should say. The fact that they are slightly tinted in the back, so that's a pretty cool look. Of course, you're gonna have some trim level badging on that rear lift gate as well. Also like the aluminum trim found here on the rear bumper, so that's gonna help prevent you from scratching things up when you're taking things in and out of that rear lift gate. That's always a good thing too. And just below it all, there is a single exhaust outlet down there. Believe it or not, it of course is tucked away. Wouldn't have minded if they were exposed exhaust outlets, maybe with a chrome tip, something like that. That would have been a little better looking in my personal opinion. But having said all that, I still think you guys know what we have to do next. As always, here is that exhaust clip. So now since we are around back of the Rogue, when it comes to opening that rear lift gate, it is a hands-free power lift gate. If you were to go with the SL or Platinum trim levels, that's how you're gonna get the hands-free version at least. But there is still a power lift gate that is going to be optional on the SV that we have today. So I do wanna mention that as well. To go ahead and open that rear lift gate, there is a button on the key fob. There is also a button by the driver's side, left knee, and there is a button on the lift gate itself, of course, as well. So you got a few different options there, but once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 36.8 cubic feet. So I'm gonna be doing some comparisons here just so you guys can have a better understanding of how much that is. Hyundai Santa Fe comes in at 35.9, so the Rogue's gonna have more than that. CRV comes in at 37.6. The RAV4 comes in at 37.5 in case you wanted that comparison. Then if you wanted some more space though, those rear seats do fold down, bumping that up to 72 cubic feet, by the way. And that is a 60-40 split in case you were curious there. Hyundai Santa Fe comes in at 71.3. CRV comes in at 75.8. And the Toyota RAV4 comes in at 69.8. So good bit more than the Toyota RAV4. We'll say that a little bit more than the Santa Fe. So decent amount of storage. I'll definitely say that. But also in that cargo area, four cargo tie down hooks. That's always nice. There is some in floor storage for the SL and Platinum. And even if you didn't go with one of those trims, there's still some in floor storage back there. You could easily put something within that center spare tire that is underneath that cargo floor back there if you wanted to, like a tire inflator kit or something like that. So still a little bit of storage. I did want to mention that. Grocery hooks, you can find them back there. Cargo lighting, there's a 12 volt power outlet. Pretty much everything that always comes standard is going to be found in that cargo area. So that was very very nice. Make your way now to the rear legroom, and I like the way the passengers are set up in the second row here. Here's why. Of course, when it comes to rear legroom, 38.5 inches, and that's certainly acceptable. Hyundai Santa Fe comes in at 40.9. CRV comes in at 41.3. Toyota RAV4 comes in at 37.8. So again, it's got the Toyota RAV4 beat, but for reference, I mean even six feet tall. This is how much space I had in that second row sitting behind my own driving position. So that should give you guys a full understanding of how much space is back there it's a decent amount rear ventilation is going to come standard on all trim levels love that you don't always find that but what i really like on the nissan rogue is rear window sunshades coming with the sl and platinum which is going to be optional on the sv that we have today the reason i like this is because you don't always find rear window sunshades in this particular segment once you hit the three row suvs you usually do but not so much with the two row suvs like the mazda cx-5 for example i know you don't get rear window sunshades with that so I love seeing them in the Nissan Rogue. That is 100% a big plus for me, especially when you have super young kids or you're bringing a newborn home from the hospital. Those rear window sunshades are going to be amazing, keeping the sun out of their eyes. So that's definitely something I always look for. Rear center armrests with cup holders, you can also find that back there. Heated rear seats can be found with the platinum trim level only. That's usually how it goes. Top trim level always gets that. So that's pretty cool too. Also, you can find a couple USB charging ports for those second row passengers, which is a big thing for me, especially if you have kids so they can always charge with their devices back there. So quite honestly, between the USB charging ports and the rear window sunshades and the optional heated rear seats, you pretty much got everything possible you could want for those second row passengers. But then making our way now to the front seats, manually adjustable cloth seats coming with the S. 
SV trim level is going to add to that eight-way power driver's seat with two-way power lumbar. SL trim level is going to add four-way power adjustable passenger seat, memory settings, leather seating, and heated front seats as well. And by the way, some of that is going to be optional on the SV, and we do actually have that leather seating today, along with the heated front seats as well. So I do want to mention that too, but platinum trim level then is also going to add quilted leather seating, which is a very cool look to it as well. But overall, when it comes to seat comfort, once again, perfectly fine, really above average, I will say, and that's due in part because of the lumbar support. Definitely made for very comfortable seating. I could definitely see myself taking the Nissan Rogue on a long road trip or even to Ocean City, Maryland. Definitely very comfortable seating, so we'll say that. Then touching on the steering wheel, it is tilt and telescoping. 10 and 2 grips are perfect. They're not too thick, not too thin. They're just right on this one. It will be a leather wrap steering wheel on the SL and Platinum. That is going to be optional on the SV. And it can be heated as well for those same trim levels. SL and Platinum optional on the SV. Again, we got that option once again. And the button for that is going to be located just around the climate control settings up front here. So it's pretty cool that we got that too. And it is a flat bottom as well. Nissan tends to do that and I love that quite honestly so all in all steering wheel is perfectly fine but now let's go ahead and make our way to the startup and let me start by showing you guys the key here all of your buttons are located on one side of the key you got your Nissan logo at the top lock unlock the button to pop the rear hatch and the circular button at the very top under the Nissan logo that is going to be your remote start which is going to come with the SV trim level and up that's how you're going to get that all in all though, for all trim levels, it's gonna be keyless entry with a push button start. So all I'm going to do here is simply put my foot on the brake and press that engine start button, which is located just in front of the shifter there. It's open then once started up, tachometer is all the way to your left, speedometer is to your right, and there is a small-ish digital display front and center to control what is on that digital display. There are steering wheel mounted controls on the left side of the steering wheel, giving you things like a digital speedometer if you wanted to display that up there. There's also your trip A, trip B of course, tire pressure information, radio settings, Bluetooth information, safety information, the list goes on, so really quite a bit up there that you can display, but it gets better actually for the platinum trim level you can actually get a 12.3 inch full digital gauge cluster we don't have it today to show to you guys but that's pretty stinking cool that the fact that you're able to get that full digital gauge cluster i always prefer that over the standard gauges so would have loved to have tested that out today but i'll throw a picture of it on the screen right now in case you guys wanted to see it that's pretty cool but then touching on overall interior quality dual panel panoramic moonroof coming with the sl and the platinum Again, optional on the SV. That's what you guys are looking at right now. Definitely lets in a ton more light for this video. Goes all the way into the back for the rear passengers as well. Overhead LED map lighting is going to be available. However, we do kind of have this old school lighting up front here. It looks like halogen bulbs and it's definitely not as good as LED. I will say that. Interior accent lighting is going to come with the platinum trim level only. You can find dual zone climate control for the SV trim level. However, tri-zone climate control is going to come with the SL and platinum, meaning those rear passengers can set their own temperatures as well. It's pretty stinking cool. Wireless phone charger is going to come with the platinum trim level only. And overall, when it comes to interior quality, is very simplistic. I like that. And I absolutely love the two-toned interior colors that we have here. Guys, may not notice it maybe you do but there's a dark leather and then just on top of that there is a brown finish or brown leather on the doors there so i like the two-tone color scheme there also just above the passenger side glove box there is some plastic finishes but there's a nice design to him so i actually don't mind that either just in front of the shifter you have a little bit of rubberized storage presumably to put your cell phone so it doesn't slide around and i like how they angled it down so your cell phone's even less likely to slide around for that reason as well it's pretty nice usb charging port there as well as a regular phone charging port there too 12 volt power outlet just behind that just to the right of the shifter i should say there is two cup holders surrounded by matte black texturized plastic finish I actually like that a lot of times manufacturers will just put like a base gray plastic which is kind of boring and it looks low quality but with this it actually looks kind of high quality i really like the surrounds here so i gotta say that also the shifter itself is pretty darn cool there is a button on the left side of the shifter you just press that in you move it back for drive move it up for reverse and then press down the p for park so it is a little bit different of a shifter than you may be used to seeing but i do like it it's new and it's different so i like that electromechanical park 
parking brake just behind that shifter. Of course, you got your circular dial for the drive modes just behind the cup holders there. And when you press the button just behind that, it's going to open up your center armrest, which is going to give you a decent amount of storage within that as well. So overall interior quality, I actually really like it. There's an overhead sunglass holder. I don't know if I mentioned that already as well, but overall, it's pretty darn nice. It's pretty much as I would expect the Rogue to be and actually a little bit better than I expected the Rogue to be. And here's another thing I almost forgot to mention. Just below those cup holders and the shifter and all that, there's even more storage and it's hidden. So maybe if you have something to hide, like let's say a purse or something, you put that underneath here, nobody's going to see it and you can actually leave it there. That is pretty cool as well. So again, the Rogue really went beyond what my expectations were. So I really like the interior quality of this. That's essentially what I'm trying to say. But now let's go ahead and make our way to the tech display on this one. 8-inch color touchscreen display is going to come with the S, S, V, and SL trims. However, if you were to go with the Platinum, that bumps that up to a 9-inch color touchscreen display. Either way, you still get Bluetooth and audio streaming. You still get Android Auto Apple CarPlay. However, wireless Apple CarPlay is going to be coming soon. So I do want to mention that, although it's not quite yet here at the time of this video, factory navigation system is going to come with the Platinum trim level only. And of course, you can check out your radio settings up there as well. And by the way, when it comes to the sound systems, there are a few different ones dependent upon the trim level that you go with. For example, that S trim is going to give you four speakers. SV and SL is going to to give you six speakers and then if you were to go with the platinum you are going to get a bose sound system with dual subwoofers but of course that's not the one we have today we got the six speaker sound system so what do you guys say let's go ahead and turn on the radio see what we got playing today on sirius xm and let's test out the clarity of this one actually a heck of a lot better than i expected for a six speaker sound system that was Actually a decent amount of bass, not as much as the Bose sound system is going to be obviously, but when we're talking six speaker sound systems, usually I don't get that much back. That was pretty darn good when it comes to a six speaker sound system, I will say I kind of liked it. So last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on that tech display is of course, when you do put the Rogue in reverse, you will find a rear view camera coming standard for every single trim level across the board. And this is where it really gets good. 360 degree monitor, not coming on just the Platinum, but the SV trim level and up. I feel like every other SUV in this class, in this segment, you have to get the very top trim level to get that 360 degree monitor. But we have it here in the SV. It comes standard on the SV, the SL and Platinum. That's wonderful. Well done, Nissan, and as always, that is going to lead us into safety. And so to start, front side and side curtain airbags do come standard. Driver and passenger knee airbags up front as well. It doesn't always come standard. In the back, you're going to have latch, aka lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats, rear child door locks, tire pressure monitoring system. That's all pretty boring at this point. But some of the more advanced safety features that do come standard across the board include forward collision warning, automatic emergency braking with pedestrian detection, lane departure warning, a blind spot monitor, monitor with rear cross traffic alert, rear parking sensors, reverse automatic braking, high beam assist, and a driver attention monitoring system as well. That is a ton of advanced safety features coming standard on every single trim level, even the S. However, if you were to go with the SV trim level and up, that is going to add to that adaptive cruise control as well. And the Platinum trim then is going to add to that front, rear, and the side sonar system. So parking sensors essentially all the way around. That's pretty cool. And also traffic sign recognition as well, giving you the speed limit at any given road, any given time. So that's pretty cool too. But overall, when it comes to my final thoughts here of the 2021 Nissan Rogue, night and day difference, quite honestly, between the previous generation and this one. First, starting with the steering feel alone. That was one of the major things I could not really get past on the last generation Rogue. It has completely been fixed with this one. The steering feel is absolutely amazing. Definitely has a very nice weight to it. Instantly points you in the direction that you want to go. So I love that to start. Also, the redesign itself looks absolutely amazing. I think it looks so much better. So exterior and interior for that matter. Love that. Love this new style shifter. It's very different. Love that the 360 degree monitor comes standard on lower trim levels. Love the rear window sunshades on this thing. I usually you don't get on other vehicles in this same class of an SUV. So that's brilliant as well. Some of the room for improvement, I guess, is still kind of slow. But having said that, that kind of slowness really gives you better reliability when it comes to the engine in the end. 
also the transmission. If there's anything I'm kind of worried about with the Nissan Rogue when it comes to reliability, it's that CVT transmission. You just don't always hear good things about it. However, that's not to say it's gonna be unreliable or anything. That's just the only thing in my mind that would worry me ever so slightly. I'm sure the engine itself will be perfectly reliable though, but also very good fuel economy for its class as well. I will say that given the size of this SUV. So that's definitely a plus as well. Overall, I did not know what to expect about this new Rogue. I haven't watched any reviews on it or read any reviews on it quite yet, but I gotta say, I really like it actually. It's a ton better than that last generation, like I was saying, and I'm really curious to see what IIHS comes out with in terms of crash test results and all that fun stuff when it comes to safety. But I have a feeling though it's gonna be perfectly fine because the Rogue has been perfected for quite some time now when it comes to that. And also all the advanced safety features now on this thing are absolutely amazing. So anyways, I really like this one. Let me know what you guys think of it in the comments section below. That is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen there if you want to see what's coming next on the channel. Be sure you hit the subscribe and the bell notification button. If you're into new car reviews, that is what we do here on this channel after all. Do appreciate you guys watching more than you know, and I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold.